Ahead on Early Birds, the Falcons are heading to the jungle for a chance at a statement win over the Super Bowl runners-up. We'll get you ready by going one-on-one -on -one with the big man himself, Grady Jarrett. Plus, we're breaking down a busy day of college football, and we'll tell you about giving back at a local college. Have your drink of choice ready. Maybe not what Arthur and the O-line were enjoying. Early Birds is coming up. Grab a cup of your favorite Joe and let's talk Falcons football on Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz. Oh, good morning and welcome into Early Birds. He's DJ, I'm Justin. Falcons trying to get back above 500 yeah. for the first time since 2017. It's been a while. Been a while. Been a while. They're been gonna, a while. <laughs> they got the chance in Cincy tomorrow. We're going to get things started with the opening drive. Falcons and Bengals here on Fox 5 on Sunday. Atlanta will be led by the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. Shock, Marcus Mariota. He was efficient last week. 13 of 14 passing, two touchdowns, ran for a score. So, Shock, I'll ask you, have the Falcons found a formula straight out of the 1950s? Absolutely. <laughs> it's winning games for you. It's been productive. It's efficient. Your quarterback is in a position where he feels more comfortable. I know we're used to seeing quarterbacks throw it 40, 50 times a game now, but this works for this Falcons squad. The way it's assembled, running the football, being efficient, allowing your defense to stay in the ball game, this is what works, and we got three wins because of it. And the guy who's running that offense says he's feeling better every week. For not playing for a couple of years, it's kind of getting back into the, the rhythm of things, um, and I appreciate Art and those guys kind of helping me get through that. I think this offense, we do a lot of different things, so depending on who we're playing this week, you know, maybe we might throw it, maybe we might run it. I just think that we got a lot of versatility that allows us to create advantages. As we continue on the opening drive, the Falcons' defense will have their hands full with the guys from Death Valley. Hmm. Quarterback Joe Burrow, receiver Jamar Chase, both out of LSU. And it's tough to stop these guys. Chase had seven catches, 132 yards, two scores last week. And Shock, what makes this combo so good? Ooh, they know each other so well. And the fact that my man Jamar Chase understands how he's probably one of the best route runners we have mm. in the league. He can run every route in the, in the game. And then there's also a quarterback who understands where he's going to be, but also knows that he's going to get the football to him at all times. And they're going to force it to him. They got two guys between him and T. Higgins yep. that have over 101 targets. So expect that to happen. And the Falcons also have to manage without Casey Hayward, who just went on IR. Darren Hall will probably maybe be his replacement. We all practice like starters, so going out there, it's helpful. However, um, you go out, going out there and just playing football, I've been playing football my whole life, especially the defensive back. Like I have played that literally my whole life. So going out there, it's, it's, it feels natural, so nothing too big. And as we wrap up the opening drive, it is 5 o'clock somewhere. Let's crack open a cold one. What if I just pulled up a six-pack? That. That's not happening here, but you know what? It does happen apparently adjacent to the field after a big win. Shock, what did you think of the celebration? Oh, I loved it. This is what it's all about. You work so hard during the week preparing for a ball game, and we know Arthur Smith is an offensive lineman at heart. So to be able to celebrate this moment with this offensive lineman, and of course there were stipulations of win, 100 plus yards, they did it. It just shows that Arthur Smith is human. He will have some fun <laughs> with his guys. <laughs> Arthur Smith says it's not gonna become a weekly tradition. We'll see if the O-line feels differently. <laughs> Welcome on so. into <laughs> Early Birds alongside DJ Shockley. I'm Justin Felder, and those Cincinnati Bengals, they're coming into the season. They came in with high expectations, but they have an identical 3-3 three and three record to Atlanta. Yep. They actually got there the same way. They went 0-2, oh then they won 3 out of 4. Yeah, I think everybody's still trying to figure out how their particular team works for this year. Mm -hmm. They're obviously going to the Super Bowl is a big deal, but when you have a team that's kind of struggling now, you're trying to get it back on track, and that's what both teams are doing. Well, Shock, I'm going to need you to walk like an Egyptian go. over to the film room. I'm with that. I you know, get that one. You no. know who sings that? Yeah. No, the, I don't. The Bangles. Oh, Bangles. What Bangles. Bangles. That's a good one. Like that's that. my best one of the year. <laughs> Mike drop. All right. We'll see you in the film room in a few. Right. But first, Grady Jarrett is one of the toughest guys you'd ever hope to encounter on a football field. Off of it, though, he's like so many parents of young kids listening to We Don't Talk About Bruno on repeat, if that's what it takes to make the little guy happy. Grady's son, Grayson, recently turned one. So before we talked football, Grady and I talked about an epic first birthday party for the big man's biggest and littlest fan. 
He had a Encanto theme party, you know, he had his little drip on. I bought him his little GJ necklace, you know what I'm saying? Like a like old pops, you know what I'm saying? He don't get the full full, you know what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta go get that one yourself, son. But I got we have family come in from all over. It's just crazy just to see how fast he's growing. And it's just like I mean yesterday, you know, I'm trying to catch a nap, man. This little dude just trying to play all day and just and, and, and so he feel like he's growing out his naps time. I'm like, man. So I'm, I was a heat trip. Well, your son's had a lot to cheer for, uh, for dad at games this year. How do you describe your season so far? Um, you know, I feel like I started off strong, which is one of the emphasis that I wanted to focus on this year. But I just feel like it's so much um, more football out there for me to, to continue to play better and just reach and just strive to just push myself to be the best I can be, you know, for the success of the team. And I'm just really enjoying just playing football, man, having fun, playing with passion, you know, just taking it all in, consciously enjoying it, you know, realize that I'm in the moment you know that I that I pray for you know I'm in the moment that I dream of one of the things I want to ask you about your season is it seems like a lot of your biggest plays have come at the biggest moments, mm -hmm. which I refuse to think is a coincidence, yeah. right? And the other team's got to be on the sidelines saying, don't let 97 beat us. Yeah. How does that keep happening? I mean, you know, just being ready, you know, and expecting to make the big play when it needs to be made. A lot of preparation, seen and unseen work. You know, every week I know somebody come up with a plan to try to neutralize and stop and slow me down, whatever it may be. So it's going to take me being ready for whenever the opportunity presents itself for me to go make something happen. You guys have a chance to go above 500 for the first time in five years. Mm -hmm. I know it's just numbers in the standings, but what would that mean to you guys? Because you banged on that door a lot to get back over that mark. Yeah, um, it'll still be early in the season. We don't want to get there and celebrate like, oh, we to take a break, you know? You always want to win, you want to stay above 500. You don't want to be a part of the middle of the pack. Still so much football left to be played, you know? I never really even thought about it. It's been that long to be over 500, so I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, that's definitely something that you would like to get over. You, you know, we still in the second quarter of the season. Offense goes over 100 yards yeah. rushing. They go pound beers afterward with the coach. If you guys hold teams to under 100 yards, should there be a celebration? Coach Pease breaking out a cigar, what, what do you think? Uh, I don't know, you know, I haven't gave it too much thought about it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was good to see the guys go out there and have fun, man. But, uh, you know, I enjoyed myself too, but I'm not really a beer guy myself. But, okay. um, <laughs> it's time to get some game intel from Shock. You're invited into the film room. So cut the lights and let's get started. When you rush 40 times and for over 150 yards, there are a lot of things that go into how you become successful in the run game. Now, last week, versus a really good defense, actually the number one defense, this is what the Falcons did to help them be able to run the football. And there are a lot of moving parts in this. Now, this is just a simple toss crack. You got Huntley in the backfield, but the most important piece of this is the start. Kyle Pitt, we want him to catch footballs, yes, but also he's done so great in the run game. Now, on this particular play on, on toss crack, you got a guy who's going to seal the edge. That's going to be Kyle Pitt. You're going to have you have a big offensive tackle going on the right side. He's going to go around. He's going to kick out the defensive back. And you have your center, Dalman, get up on the linebacker. Let's watch how this play gets started. And it starts with Kyle Pitts on the edge. Watch him seal the edge. Nice job of sealing the edge here. Here's your center going to get out and get on this backer. Look at your big Caleb McGarry getting around there pulling. Athletic guy who can get on the edge. And then watch this. Look at the angle you have. This is a great job of getting leverage on this particular linebacker. Now you got to seal. Now the play continues to go. You're going to see, look at, look at Dalman get out there. Now he's got leverage on that particular defensive back. And look at this crease for Huntley to run through. Guys doing their job. And look at this, point of contact. This is the finish that you like here. You got a guy finishing on the player. He's on the 10-yard line. He doesn't go down until he gets about the three-yard line. This is the physicality you like. Offensive linemen are athletic on the edge. Just this offensive line, these backs, tight ends, together, they're going to be tough to stop as this season continues. They'll try to keep it going tomorrow in Cincy. Thanks, Shock. More to come on Early Birds. Hopefully, Tennessee got next day delivery on some new goalposts. Michael Jenkins will tell, you about, tell us about his time on Rocky Top during last week's upset. Plus, the technique I like to do is just having my hands high and elbows in. They might call it a fair catch, but that doesn't mean it's anything easy. We'll talk punt returns and peripheral vision next on Early Birds. Hey, Falcons fans, score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. Early Birds is presented by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. 
and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Truist, committed to a better future. And by Home Depot, how doers get more done. Welcome back to Early Birds. It's time to switch gears and talk a little college ball. Brought to you by Truist. BB&T and SunTrust are now Truist. Here again is Fox 5's Justin Felder. Welcome back into Early Birds, and we welcome in former Falcons receiver Michael Jenkins. And before we talk about the college games today, let's talk about your weekend. Last weekend, where were you and how was it? I was at Rocky Top. So okay. I was at the game when Tennessee beat Alabama, and uh, it was an amazing experience. My first ever UT game, and I've never seen fans hand out cigars before the final kick when they kind of knew they were going to win the game. It was, it was amazing. Unbelievable mm. to see on TV. In Tennessee, they're up to third in the coaches' poll. Vols, they're coming to Athens in two weeks. Tell me more about the experience and also about this team that now people got to talk about playoffs with these guys. They're good. I mean, they're really good. Hen and Hooker is playing at an unbelievable level, and it was just amazing to see them put up 52 points on, mm. on a Bama defense. So, well respected, and you know, I have a big match coming up with the Bulldogs pretty soon, so we'll see what happens. And you saw a little history there last weekend. Josh Heifel, he's got the balls back on the map, but not totally satisfied. From the outside looking in, everybody's excited about the win. From the inside uh, looking forward, uh, we got a lot of things that we have an opportunity to get a whole lot better at. And, and the challenge for us is to become our best. Uh, we're in the early stages of that. Uh, the urgency and, and preparation and focus uh, has to remain consistent. And, and um, you know that was the message to the players. All right, Vols have Tennessee Martin today, so I don't think we're going to see any more goal posts come down. Uh, plenty of undefeated teams still vying for the playoffs, Tennessee, yep. Georgia among them. But as we're getting around the halfway point, are there any one-loss teams right now you still have your eye on that you think could sneak back up there? Well, obviously, you still have to look at Bama. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got Bryce Young, Coach Saban. I mean, they're a one-loss team that still is in the fight and in the hunt, especially for the SEC championship and to get to the playoffs. So, they... They lost, obviously, but they're still in the hunt. Yeah, Alabama, they got Mississippi State today. They got Mike Leach to figure out. Nick Saban not pleased about that loss, but of course, ready to move forward. This is something that from the bottom up, all right? I mean, I'm talking about coaches. I'm talking about every player. Uh, I'm talking about me. Uh, we all got to do a better job to, you know, help these guys learn from their mistakes, uh, improve, and get better. And the last matchup we want to talk about today, it's our Zaxby's indescribably good game of the week. We got two ranked teams in this one, both yeah. undefeated, Look perennial that. powers. The Qs. Clemson and Syracuse. <laughs> Wait, Jake, what's going on? Okay, so two things. One, are the uh, is Clemson kind of flying under the radar undefeated? And two, Syracuse? Like, yeah. are the, do they have a chance in this one? Well, Clemson is kind of going under the radar, especially with all the SEC play. Right. You know, we're talking Pac-12, we're talking Big Ten. Mm -hmm. um, but they're still right there undefeated. And Syracuse, I mean, they beat a top 25 NC State team. Yep. They played very well with Clemson last year, 17-14 mm -hmm. game. So they think they can win this thing. It will be an exciting one to watch that game today at noon. Shock, the dogs have the weekend off to rest up for the challenge of my Gators. DJ, how you feeling? Oh, I feel great. I can't <laughs> wait for next week when we can talk dogs and oh, gators. Boy. It's going to be fun. All right, for kick returners, there's a lot of factors that must be taken into account. When do they call a fair catch? How much space do they have to make a return? These are all the questions Avery William answers when he catches punts every week. He shows us how he catches punts in this week's Going Deep. The technique I like to do is just having my hands high and elbows in. I'm going to try to just catch it in the pocket. Um, you can choose to have a wide base or not. It's kind of simple, but not that simple. But the hardest part isn't catching, it's probably tracking it. Okay. Seeing where the ball's going to go and getting under it. But I'd say the hardest part, you know, especially for beginners, is probably tracking the ball. Are there tricks we wouldn't realize in doing it, or is it just experience? Is it just doing it a bunch? Experience reps. Um, you know, like anything, you know, just you get better with reps and get more comfortable. How do you decide whether or not to fair catch? What are you looking for? Because it's easy for us on TV to say, wow, there's a guy 20 yards from him. How the heck do you do that? Yeah, if you feel like you're about to catch it and get and get hit or get hit before you catch it, you should probably fair catch it. If you don't feel like you'll get hit, then catch it and go. It's just that, okay, maybe a better question is, do you take your eyes off the ball to see if guys are coming or is it all peripheral? Um, it depends. You know, in college, you know, never really had to look down mm -hmm. just because the ball, the ball wasn't kicked as high. Mm -hmm. You know, with the ball being kicked higher, much higher in the NFL, um, it changed your angle of your head. So you're no longer able to peripheral the guys in front of you if it's a, a high ball. So you might have to peek. 
That was interesting about how he didn't have to look down in college. All right, more to come on Early Birds. Our friends from Fox Sports were in town to recruit some college talent. We'll tell you about it later in the show. You're watching Early Birds, presented by Mercedes-Benz, on your official home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Well, we've shown you the medical equipment that training staff has to work with inside Mercedes-Benz Stadium, but sometimes athletes might need a more serious evaluation. Luckily, Grady Hospital is just down the road from the Benz. Dr. Kyle Hammond explains the partnership between the team and the hospital in this week's Emory Road to Recovery. We utilize Grady, um, being a level one trauma center, being a premier hospital to evaluate and take care of anything that could come through their door, and then also being affiliated with Emory, um, so we have a relationship with them. And so we have staff that are here, um, EMS staff that are here full time to help us um, with a player who may need to go to Grady. And that's both for the visiting team and for our home team, because we're you know, appropriately uh, responsible for both. And we have um, visiting uh, team doctor, what's called a visiting team medical liaison, or we call them a VTML, and they use, are affiliated with Grady, and so they can help with both teams. We have an ambulance on site, so like I said, God forbid we have to go to the hospital, we're going to the hospital. Somebody from my staff will go, one of the doctors from my staff will go along with the athlete, one of our training staff will go along with the athlete, um, the VTML will go along with the athlete, and then the EMS personnel will go along with the athlete. And then we have Grady doctors who are here to help coordinate uh, that athlete getting in immediately, getting seen immediately. Um, if they need a CT scan or something like that, having that immediate you know, diagnostics and then hopefully nothing beyond that. But if they needed some kind of treatment there, they would um, intervention or whatever, then that would happen immediately as well. All right, more to come on Early Birds. We'll catch up with our friends from Fox Sports as they try to find some local broadcast talent. That's coming up after the break. Early Birds has been presented to you by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Hey, Falcons fans. Score a touchdown with low tire prices at Mavis Tires and Brakes, the official tire retailer of the Atlanta Falcons. Visit MavisTire.com to find a store near you. All right, it is time for our play of the day presented by Lucra, the new friendly competition app. Here's the question. Will Marcus Mariota have more than 13 completions in the game against the Bengals? Shock. Yeah, that's a good question. I, you know what? I think he will because this is a game that possibly you will need to throw the football with how good Cincinnati is. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of good receivers. Joe Burrow likes to throw it around. You may be in a game where you got to score some points. Yeah, but remember, DJ, the Falcons are actually 3-0 and this year when Mariota has 13 or fewer Ooh. completions. It's a tough one. If you wanted to make this or any other hypothetical wager with your friends, all you got to do is scan the QR code on your screen. And finally today, some students in our area had a reason to put on a big smile <laughs> and maybe it'll lead to a big break. Our friends from Fox Sports hosted a free headshot studio last weekend at Clark Atlanta. It's part of a new annual HBCU homecoming campaign to bring in some new talent and increase awareness of opportunities with Fox Sports. Students from all over the AUC were invited, alumni too. The Fox Sports Inclusion Council wants to create a cohesive relationship between HBCUs and Fox Sports. Um, we want everyone to know that they are welcome to apply and uh, we encourage people to look at foxcareers.com and come join us. Hey, get some good looking headshots. Good no to see doubt. Fox Sports here. No, that's pretty cool. I like that. And on Fox Sports tomorrow, we'll see the Falcons and the Bengals. Give me one more matchup you're going to be watching. Up front. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm looking at the – because Joe Burrow's been sacked 21 times really? this year. Wow. Fourth in the league. So, can the Falcons get some – finally get some more sacks and add on to that point total and have a good game at it. You can flush the Joe Burrow. I think he had a good chance. So, that D-line, can Grady get some more? Like you mentioned in your thing, he always finds a way to come up in key moments. So, we'll see. You got Grady, who we heard from. Any other players you want to see get to the quarterback? I know AK's been close. Yeah, AK's been close. I want, to, I want to see my man TQ. Ooh. Taquan Graham. I want to see him get his, get some love, too. So, it's going to be pressure up the middle, forcing yes. some uh, incompletion, maybe some more turnovers. That's where we're most uncomfortable, Justin. Right uh, in the middle of that pocket. Right up the middle. That's where the Falcons <laughs> have their strength on that D-line. All right, our strength is DJ Shockley. He, for, uh, for DJ, I'm Justin. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of your morning and weekend.